CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Art is the accomplice of love, we are told. Therefore, it should follow that the art of love is the highest art of all. But is love an art? Is it something to be developed, nurtured, practiced? Or is love something that just comes naturally? Obviously, there are two sides to that question. Which is why we have a story. Uh, Mr. Crawford. This painter, Kurt Strelitz, have you ever heard of him? No. But the paintings you bought are worthless. You threw away $250,000. Yeah, I know. It doesn't make any difference how much money I lose or throw away. At the end of the year, I always wind up with more than I started. <laughs> mystery drama, The Spaces on the Wall, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Kevin McCarthy. It is sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Consider something. Your little daughter, age six, daubs a few colored lines, blobs, circles on a piece of paper. But nobody says, hey, let's declare a national holiday. Then you happen to pass by an art gallery, and there in the window, spectacularly framed and dramatically lighted, is what's purported to be a most fantastic masterpiece. The price tag is $150,000. You're no expert, but why is it any better than your daughter's? The art world, my friends, is a weird world indeed. We're invited to a cocktail party being given by a very rich art collector. We weren't exactly invited, but neither were at least half the people here. We might as well crash. Just as they did. Hello, Hal. Ursula, oh, we cannot waste so much as a single moment. Come with me at once. This way. Where are you taking me? Ah, into the Sanctum Sanctorum. Will you see? See what? Ah. Oh, don't tell me you're up to one of your old tricks. Oh, now. Isn't this an anniversary? Now, Ursula, whatever are you talking about? Of course it is. It was just last year at this time that you bought the Mona Lisa. Uh, <clears throat> that was a youthful indiscretion. <laughs> last year you were hardly a youth. As I recall, this person convinced you that he'd been able to make the switch one night in the Louvre. Um, a cleverly made fake had been hung in her place, and you could have da Vinci's very own original. Um, <laughs> oh, Hal, how could you have been so, so... So immoral. Stupid. Yes. Certain people have no business being rich. <laughs> When I get an impulse to do something wrong, I, I have the means to gratify it. Whereas if I were poor, oh, well, at least I'm not frustrated. That in itself is healthy. Anyhow, I had this irresistible urge to own the Mona Lisa. I understand. Do you really? There are many eccentric people like you who will buy or steal a famous artwork if they can and lock it away somewhere in a secret place where only they can enjoy it. But I only felt that way about the Mona Lisa. To have the eyes, the unfathomable eyes of that most beautiful and mysterious of women looking at me. And no one else but me. Mm. And what indiscretion have you committed this time? Ursula, as my advisor, my 
guide in all manner of things artistic. Uh -huh. I, uh... The problem is, you generally consult me after the fact, at which time it becomes my sorrowful duty to inform you that what you purchased is not a Da Vinci, a Rembrandt. Oh, wait till you see this. All right, follow me. Uh -huh. Now, before I turn on the lights, I must swear you to secrecy. Mm, I was afraid of something like this. A mm. condition of the purchase was that it would not be made public for five years. If the deal was legitimate and above board, you have my word. Then, uh, voila, there should be light. See? It, it's impossible. Ursula, my dear, hanging on the wall are four genuine... I know what they are. Strelitzes. Well, then you should also know that these are the only four in existence. Where did you get these paintings? I bought them. From whom? The owner. Impossible. Why? Because the owner is Karl Mueller, Karl Christian Mueller. <sighs> My dear, the owner was Carl Christian Muller. But Carl would never... He, he promised. He gave me his word. If you were ever to sell the Strelitzes, he would sell them to me. And you believed him? Carl Muller is a gentleman of the old school. Uh, my dear, the school seems to be out. These can't be strelitzes. They can't be genuine strelitzes. Oh, I invite you to examine them closely. In your heart, you know already. You bought these from Mueller. Of course. Mueller personally sold you these four paintings. No, the, the deal was consummated through an agent. Who was the agent? Well, does it matter... I have the bill of sale signed by Mueller himself. I have never known Carl Mueller to break his word. Well, it was the first time for everything. Oh, I suppose you're right, Hal. I suppose you're right. But, Ursula, uh, my dear, what you say is just not so. Carl, I saw the paintings with my own eyes. Mr. Yes, all four of them. You sold them. You broke your promise. I'm sure it must have been a most fantastic offer. But you might have had the courtesy... Oh, uh, sir, I am sitting in my study high in the beautiful Berkshire Mountains of Massachusetts. I forgive you, Carl. I know things haven't As been going too well. Saying, I am sitting here in my study with a glass of an excellent local white wine and enjoying What for Strelitzes? My four Strelitzes, the only ones in the entire world. But you sold them. How could I sell them? And here they are on the four walls of my room. But I just saw them and... and could it have been an illusion, my dear? Are you saying that you did not sell the Strelitzes? come to me, Mrs. Derringer. I don't know the first thing about art. I don't even know what I like. I've been told you're an excellent private eye, Mr. Westerly. Private investigator. Excuse me. I resent being called a dick, a flat foot, a gumshoe. I, uh, I would like you to find the thief or thieves who victimized my friend. Who is your friend? Is it necessary for me to bring him into it? Well, he's in it now. My friend is a very wealthy man. His money is all inherited, of course. A few years ago, he decided to become an art collector. However, he faced a problem. What was that? Just about all the great art had already been collected. Well, still, I imagine for money, just about anything could uh, be Not bought. only has most of it been spoken for... But it already belongs to museums, institutes, and the like. Aren't there any great painters today? Probably. Probably? What kind of an answer is that? An honest answer. There are painters who are all the rage, but 
How do we know they're not just a fad? Mm. You need time to authenticate an artist's true values. All right, all right. Now, anyhow, your friend bought these four fakes. For how much? A quarter of a million dollars. That's about 61000 apiece. Cheap enough if they had been genuine. Mm. Who was the artist supposed to be? A German painter of the late 20s named Kurt Strelitz. He's still alive? No. He's dead. When did he die? Where and how? It isn't known where he died exactly, or when, or how. Well, then, how do we know he's dead? When the Nazis came to power, thousands of people just disappeared. Uh, the police would knock on your door and drag you off to prison. And that's what happened to this Kurt Strelitz? Yes. When had he been taken away? In the late spring of 1939, just before the war. Now, how old was he? He was about 25. And he was already famous? He was established, yes. Mm. And these four paintings are all he ever did? They're the only ones that survived. The Nazis destroyed all his other work. Mm. And you say that the four that were bought by your client are fakes. Why? Is it that obvious? Oh, no. Actually, they're excellent. But you as a connoisseur, you can tell. Is that it? Well, the fact is, the owner of the paintings, a Mr. Carl Christian Mura, promised that he would sell them to no one but me. Well... You know, men have been known to break promises. Mm, not Carl Mueller, and certainly never to me. Why not? He's a man of irreproachable ethics. Besides, when he was in trouble himself with the Nazis, it was my father who made it possible for Mueller to come to America. I see. The Strelitzes are still in Mueller's possession, and so naturally the ones my client purchased must be fakes. You know that Mueller still has the originals? I spoke to him. You mean he went to his home or wherever? And, no, no, and... no. He's become a recluse. Doesn't see anyone. Uh-huh. Where is he? <laughs> you ask a great many questions. Well, that's what you're paying me to do. But it does seem to me that so many of them are um, irrelevant. And then you spoke to this Mr. Muller on the telephone? Yes. And he told you that he hadn't sold the paintings, that they were still in his possession. And therefore, you assume that the ones that your client had purchased had to be fakes. What other conclusion could there possibly be? But how do you know that you were speaking to Mueller? How do I know? I, I've known him since he came to this country. I've known him practically all my life. But someone could have imitated his voice. Isn't that possible? No. Not well enough to fool me. And even if it could be done, there would still be Erica. Mm, who's Erica? His daughter. She keeps house for him. And she was there, too? Of course. Carl couldn't possibly live alone. And you spoke with Erica also? Naturally, she answered the phone. I, I wish I knew what you were getting at. Mrs. Derringer, in certain wild desert countries, if your wife is sick, you call a doctor. However, he's not permitted to touch her. He isn't even allowed to look at her. He stays behind a curtain or a screen and tells you what to look for and how to examine her. Well, what does this have to do with... Well, I feel just like such a doctor in this case. I'm being kept from your client. I'm being kept from anyone who might have personal knowledge of these paintings. But from a detective's point of view, it's a relatively clear-cut situation. Treat it as you would any other type of forgery or counterfeiting or, or confidence game. That's exactly what I'm doing. And I already have four prime suspects. Four? Certainly. The first is your client, whoever he is. The second is this Mr. Carl Christian Muller. The third is his daughter, Erica. The fourth is you. Me? That's right. You. And there's a fifth. The artist himself, Kurt Strelitz. But he's dead. How do you know? Have you seen the body? A death certificate? No, no, my dear Mrs. Derringer. You, too, are like some poor doctor in one of these wild, desolate, primitive desert countries. All your information is gathered secondhand. So she has called in a private investigator, Tom Westerly. Mr. Westerly seems to have a technique, a modus operandi that's very interesting. Quite simply, he appears to suspect everybody, even his own client. 
A great many wheels seem to be turning within wheels here. But we'll see where they all go in the second act. It is said that in some indefinable way, a work of art will resemble the artist. Not in the external aspect so much, but in the sort of inner glow that illuminates the painting and imparts an essence of life itself. Perhaps. And even if a work of art is a forgery, it still was created by an artist. Therefore, it should resemble him, whoever he is. Shouldn't it? Are you actually implying, Mr. Westerly, that Mr. Mueller... His daughter, Erica, I, myself, and even poor Kurt Strelitz, who has been dead for at least 40 years, are somehow part of a plot to defraud my, uh, my client. I can only go with what I've got. But this is a, a most outrageous accusation. Mrs. Stanninger, do you actually want to apprehend whoever it was that sold the fake pictures to your client? Certainly. What other reason have I for engaging your services? Just window dressing, perhaps. What are you getting at? Well, you're Mrs. Ursula Derringer. You're an art critic and historian. You're 44 years old, divorced. How do you uh, know all this? When you called me yesterday to set up this appointment, I decided to find out about you. Of all the gold. Why? I'm sure you checked on me. From what you've told me about your alleged client, I would infer that... You've got a good thing going now. I perform a valuable service. I didn't say no. At any rate, he seems to have been stunned. So, to make him feel better, you told him that you were going to employ a private detective. But he said he didn't want anyone to know he'd been victimized. So, you said you'd keep his name out of it. Who told you all this? It's obvious. A man is defrauded out of a quarter of a million dollars. Why doesn't he go to the police? He tries to show me he can make a shrewd deal himself now and then. But it almost always ends badly. Well, you and I both know that on the basis of what you've told me, I'm not going to get anywhere. That isn't so. And since he's obviously very rich and very spoiled, he has a short attention span. He'll forget all about it soon enough. That's the charitable interpretation. Charitable? Mm -hmm. Because it assumes you are innocent of any wrongdoing. Now, how do I know that you, Muller, and his daughter didn't rig this kind of a swindle among yourselves? That's the second time you've made this monstrous accusation. Miss Derringer, you're less than candid when you refuse to give me the information I asked for. And then you forced me to rely upon my imagination. But I have so very little to tell you. You can tell me the name of your client. You can also set up a meeting. I would like to talk with him alone. I can tell you now, he isn't going to like it. I distinctly told Ursula I didn't want any publicity. Well, assuming that we apprehend the criminal, Mr. Crawford, the story will have to come out. Well, in that case, it, 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 it won't be so bad. You see... I have this problem. Which one? With my image. Everyone believes that I'm spoiled and stupid. And that isn't true. Oh, it's true enough. But I'm trying to change it. You read the papers and see where I'm always being taken by this one or that one. But I've decided no more. This last thing with the Strelitzes... That was the straw which broke the camel's back, you might say. Well, I can see why you dread another spread in the papers. Why don't you just forget about it? If the media found out about it now, the headlines would read, Gullible Holsey Crawford duped again. However, if you can apprehend the thief, that would be something else. Why? Well, it would sort of demonstrate that you can no longer pull a fast one on Halsey Crawford and get away with it. In other words, what I want you to do is to keep the investigation secret unless, of course, 
it happens to be successful. Well, if I start moving around and asking questions, the word will have to come out. We'll you simply have to be discreet. Mm-hmm. This painter, Kurt Strelitz, why did you want to buy his work in the first place? Ursula, uh, Mrs. Derringer told me all about him. Had you heard of him before that? No, I don't think so. You paid a quarter of a million dollars for the works of a man you knew nothing about? Well, you put that much money and more, perhaps, into securities you don't know anything about either. You go by the recommendations of your financial advisor, don't you? I wouldn't know anything about that. Oh. Well, in the same way, Mrs. Derringer is my artistic advisor. But she didn't advise you to buy the Strelitzes. No, she kept insisting they weren't for sale. Well, then why did she even bother to tell you about them? Because it was going to be part of my education. Kurt Strelitz was an important modern German painter. And the fact that you were approached by someone to buy the paintings by Strelitz could be a coincidence. Well, I'm sure of it. What would Ursula have to do with it? The truth is that... I've been a natural target for hustlers and confidence operators. All right, all right. You were approached. How? I received a telephone call. From whom? A woman. She said her name was, well, Smith. Helen Smith. And since I was known as a man who was interested in buying art, she had four valuable works. Astrologers. Yes. She said that the present owner, Mr. Muller, was... Interested in selling them? Well, that statement sounded half true and half false. Why? Well, I knew that a Carl Muller did own the Strelitzes. But I also knew that he'd promised them to Ursula. Shouldn't that have alerted you to something suspicious? But the woman said that that was no longer true. Mr. Muller needed the money. He was now embarrassed by the promise he'd made a long time ago... Which was why a condition of the sale stated that I was to keep the purchase secret for five years. By that time, Muller would surely be dead. So you agreed to buy them? Yes. And you went up to Massachusetts to see Muller and make the deal? No. I, I was told Muller is a recluse who refuses to see anyone, even his oldest and best friends. But you were ready to pay... A quarter of a million dollars to him. Well, it it didn't matter. He wouldn't see me. How did you arrange it, then? Well, we... We met halfway, this woman and myself, in a motel on Route 7 in Connecticut. She was waiting in the room. The paintings were on display. And you went there prepared to pay all that money without bringing someone along who had some expertise. Well, I couldn't very well bring Ursula, could I? Besides, I've, I just looked at those paintings and I I knew they were real. Ah, it's a good thing you have the money to go along with your uh, silliness and naivete. Well, that's true. I, I don't suppose I really hurt anyone but myself. And I don't even hurt myself. No matter how much money I lose or throw away, at the end of the year, my accountants tell me my fortune just keeps getting bigger. And now, describe this woman. Well, she had flaming red hair. It could have been a wig. Probably was. She was about... Five feet five or so. She was heavily made up. Could you recognize her again? If her hair color were to be different or if she wore a different wig and she had no makeup, I don't know if I would be able to. How did you know that you weren't buying stolen goods? She had a bill of sale for me and it was signed by Miss Mueller. But how could you be sure that that wasn't a forgery? Yes, I know. You're discussing all those routine take-it-for-granted rules on how to do business, but I saw the paintings, and I said, I have to have them. I I simply have to have them. How'd you pay for them? Cash. And then what? We we went our separate ways. May I have the bill of sale? All right. 
And uh, the motel room, the motel room that she was waiting for you in, does that mean that she engaged the room? Well, I suppose so. What was the name of the motel? Oh, it was more like those old-fashioned tourist cabins. It, it had a name like, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the uh, uh, Cozy Best. Cozy Best, that's it. All right, all right. I'll see what I can do with all this. I know what I did sounds well... Well, we've been through all that. When I went there with the money, I, I wasn't really sure I'd go through with it, but I looked at those paintings. The, there was something in them. I can't describe it. Oh, by the way, why did you violate this agreement? You were supposed to keep it secret for five years. Had you done that, at least you'd still believe that they were genuine stultzes. You'd be happy with your secret. Yes, I know, but... But I suppose you can't really be happy with keeping a secret unless other people are in on it. Where's the fun? I simply had to see Ursula's face when she saw the Strelitzes. She's a very fine lady in every way, but she knows so much. I just had to get the better of her wants. Better luck next time. What's your first move? I'm going to try and find your mystery lady. Will that be too difficult? It'll either be ridiculously simple or absolutely impossible. Good afternoon. You're looking for a room? Freddy can't accommodate you. Won't have a thing till a week from Monday. No, my name's Westerly. Thomas J. Westerly. What can I do for you, Mr. I'm Westerly? I'm a private investigator. Here's my card. Oh? Uh -huh. Yes, someone's been uh, misbehaving, huh? This would be a week ago, last Tuesday. A woman, medium height, very red hair, checked in here. Would you remember her? Well, we get lots of red-haired women. Seems to be a popular color. This one checked in alone. Mm -hmm. A waiter. That's what we call them. Man or a woman comes in by themselves. It means they're waiting for their friends to show up. Well, I'd like to know about this one. I'd like to help you, Mr. Westerly. I look like a fine, upstanding gentleman. However, don't know if I can see my way clear. Why not? Well, is this going to be used for divorce action? Absolutely not. You see, lots of folks uh, stop by here ain't married. Uh, that's where my business is today. Now, I understand your position. I'm not just selling folks a room. I'm also selling them some discretion. See what I mean? You will not be compromised in the slightest. I remember the redhead. I seen her come in from the road. She'd been driving down from the north... Checks in as um, Miss Barnes. Barnes? No, why not? It's more original than Smith. I says to her, you got cabin seven. She registered? Mm hmm Let me turn back these pages here. Yeah. Here's the date, and here she is. Miss Helen Barnes, 1187 Constitution Parkway, Boston, Mass. I bet you look it up, there ain't no such address. Most likely. You notice here where it says car registration, make mm -hmm. model license, print, so forth? Well, <laughs> it's blank. Now, they're supposed to fill it in, but they somehow managed to forget. She didn't fill it in either. No, I don't fuss at them for it. I understand they want to leave as little compromising information here as possible, so I just quietly take a look for myself. And... Make a note of it on a separate sheet. And this is hers, huh? Mm -hmm. This is hers, this Massachusetts tag number? Now, this is just between you and I. I understand, I understand. And I can always deny you got it from me. Thank you. Sergeant, uh, this is Tom Westerly. I need your help. Thanks. I have to check out a license tag. Do you think we'll be surprised by any of the information we get? I'm sure it isn't too difficult to guess who the red-haired woman was. Or is it? It's all falling into place so quickly, so neatly, so easily. Well, 
This is the time to start questioning basic premises while we are waiting for Act 3. The ancient Sanskrit Upanishads tell us, among other things, that the immortal gods love the obscure and despise the obvious. The only problem here lies in the fact that we can never be sure which is which. Sometimes that which is seemingly obvious is really complex beyond all understanding, and that which is apparently obscure is really crystal clear when we see it in a certain light. Yes, Sergeant. What is that name and address again? The car with that license tag belongs to Miss Erica Muller, Lionsville, Mass. Thank you, Sergeant. Thank you very much. <gasps> Miss Erica Muller, did you enjoy the movie? Who are you? What are you doing in my car? My name is Tom Westerly. I'm going to call for the police. Why? I warn you. The sheriff is parked in front of the theater. He'll hear me scream. Well, it's possible I'm making a mistake. I'm sure you are. Now you just get out of my... Perhaps car. your name isn't Erica Muller. Could it be Helen Barnes? What did you say? Oh, uh, but you couldn't be Helen Barnes. Two reasons. A, Helen was a redhead, isn't that so? And B, there is no such person as Helen Barnes. Therefore, you have to be Erica Muller. What do you want? Who, who are you? A private detective. And what are you thinking right now? It should be obvious. You worked out a little scheme to raise some money. You had some fakes made of this fellow's paintings. You knew about Hal Crawford, how he could be sold a bill of goods. As a matter of fact, you're quite friendly with Ursula Derringer. She may even have told you about him. That's what you're thinking? No, there's more. You even forced your father's name. On a bill of sale. That's not true. Hmm. Technically, I guess not. You probably handle all your father's accounts, constantly pushing all sorts of papers at him for his signature. He never could be bothered with details. I verified his signature at the local bank. It's genuine. What are you going to do? I'm going to claim the original paintings. You made a mistake. You should have forged it. This way, I have his signature on a bill of sale. And so... Armed with this document, I'm going to claim my client's property. No, please. Please what? It was the most amateurish, the flimsiest scheme I've ever encountered in a lifetime of chasing down crooks. I, I'm not a crook. Well, you're certainly not a very good one. How could you ever expect to get away with something as as rickety as this? Can I ask you to do something? Probably not. But just just for a little while. Reserve judgment. Reserve judgment? No, I've already made it. No, please, just listen to me and go to see my father. Your father? Well, I've been told that he's a recluse. He refuses to have any visitors. But he'll make an exception in your case. Why? Leave it to me. But promise. Say nothing. Think nothing. Decide nothing until you have heard everything. <laughs> father is sitting in his study. He won't get up to say hello. His back bothers him. He's a very old man. Now just let him talk. Come. Uh, father? Erica, my dearest, did you enjoy the motion picture? Oh, yes. Uh, father, may I present Mr. Tom Westerly? You see, my car broke down and he was kind enough to rescue me. Oh, Welcome, Mr. Westerly. Uh, pour the gentleman a glass of wine, Erica. Of course. Mr. Westerly is very much interested in art, Father. Oh, splendid. I have a treat for you, then, Mr. Westerly. Uh, have you ever heard of Kurt Strelitz? Oh, I believe so. Oh, cut down in his prime by... No, all right, Father, please, you must not get yourself excited. Forty years ago, so much time gone by. I have the only four strelitzes left in the world. They're hanging in the next room. You'll want to see them, I know. Yes. Kurt Strelitz. We were boys together, schoolmates. 
We both wanted to become artists. Uh, but he had the talent. And he died for it. His genius killed him. Ask me how. All right. He lived in the wrong place at the wrong time. You see, his genius made him paint the truth. Those who danger stays for truth. Fatal days for men of genius who had no choice but to speak and write and paint what they felt. Yeah, I spoke to him. Oh, well, I remember speaking to him. It was 40 years ago. Why do I see it so clearly? Still see him and hear him as if he is here in this very room with me. Carl, I thought you'd never get here. See, the last canvas, the final one of the four, is finished, Kurt, just in time for the show next week. There isn't going to be a show next week. Well, that's impossible. We've made all the arrangements. Our license has been revoked. What license? A license we need to hold a public exhibition. Your paintings have been proscribed. All of your work that is in my gallery. It's gone. You mean... You mean you sold everything? It was all confiscated by the police. What were you saying? They marched in. The lieutenant gave a salute, produced the order which said words to the effect that these decadent, degenerate canvases were a disgrace to the fatherland and would be removed at once before they would further pollute the true German art. What are they going to do with my painting? You know what they're going to do. They'll have a big bonfire one night this week and... No! I'm sorry, Kurt. We have to stop them. Stop them? How? Those paintings that... They're my work. All the work of my lifetime. All I have left are, ju are just these four. Now we'll have to hide them. Paintings were not made to be hidden. Then we'd better hide you. I won't run away. Oh, you must. Maybe we can get you to France somehow. No, I'll stay here and fight. Fight with what? Oh, we have to face facts, Kurt. It would help if we knew what the facts were. I have to save these remaining paintings. Let me hide them. That's the same as killing them. No, if if they have to die, let them die in a fire. Let them be destroyed by the enemies, not smothered to death by their friends. Where are you going? I'm going to find out where my paintings are. Kurt! Come back here! I never saw him again, Mr. Westerly. Where had he gone? To the police station to demand the restoration of his property. I betrayed him. You betrayed him? How? What did you do? I did nothing. How? Oh. At least. I saved the last four. The best he ever did. Do you agree, Erica? Yes, Father. Our oh, poor Erica. She was only a child. She doesn't remember. Now, he has arrived. Kurt Strelitz has finally arrived. And how do I know? Because they're actually making forgeries of his work. That proves he is somebody, doesn't it? I would think so. <laughs> a very dear friend of mine, a lady named Ursula Derringer, actually told me that a friend of hers had been fooled into buying fake strelitzes. <laughs> the last four. <laughs> While each can stand alone, together they form a grand design. Brotherhood. Charity, wisdom, love. Ah, come, come, you must see them. Let me help you, Father. Yeah, that, no, that's perfectly all right, child. I can... Oh! Father! Uh, here, let me give you a hand. Are you all right, Father? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I think you heard position to my chair. Just a slightly different angle, and so I, I tripped over my own feet. It's, 
The first time something like this has happened in years, isn't it, Eric? Yes, Father. Yeah. Well, Mr. Westerly, you have found me out. You see, I'm... I'm blind. Usually I can manage to hide it. I have every root in this house reduced to a science. But there's an occasional accident... Oh, you know, you don't have to guide me, Erica. I, I know my way, and... Uh, won't you follow me, please? He's blind? Yes. Well, then, how can he... How can please, he... please, don't say anything. Uh, turn on the full lights, Erica. Ah, uh, now, Mr. Westerly, look at my four magnificent paintings... I managed to get them out of Germany and safely to America. How could poor Ursula Dallinger ever think that I would sell them? Oh, she will have them after I die. That will be my gift to her. But while I live, I come in here every day. Please, don't say anything, Mr. Westerly. And lightly, ever so lightly, I run my hand over the canvas. I feel the texture. It's as if I'm speaking to Kurt Sterlitz. You, um, you promised Mr. Westerly a glass of wine, Father. Oh, of course. Why don't you and Mr. Westerly go into my study and have some? I, I, I just want to stand here for a, a minute or two. Yeah, I... I feel very close to Kurt Sterlitz tonight. Yes, Father. Mr. Westerly? Yes. What are you going to do, Mr. Westerly? I don't know. All of my life, I worked and I lived for my father. Yes, I'm sorry. No, no, don't be. It was a choice I made freely. But his ill. The doctors say he can't live much longer. Then, I'll be alone. I'll still have a considerable span of years before me. But I'll be alone. Well, we went through all of our money. I always felt I would have the Strelitzes to see me through after he passed on. But then, last week, he said, Dear... Because of all the wonderful things her family has done for me, I would like her to have the strelitzes after I die. Then what did he think would become of you? He doesn't really think in those terms. He sees himself and me as people who serve others. Since I always thought to his needs, he assumes that someone will see to mine. And that's when you decided to sell the strelitzes? Yes. I have to have something. Something to show for my life. Oh, I understand. And he doesn't know the difference. He doesn't know that what is hanging in that room is a fake. What are you going to do? Well, I'll be darned if I know. After all, what crime has been committed? My client was told he was buying genuine strelitzes, and that's what he got. He has a bill of sale to prove it. Of course, Mrs. Derringer's feelings will be hurt. She hired me because it was believed a fraud had been perpetrated upon Mr. Halsey Crawford. But he received the merchandise as stated. He has. So there's really nothing left for me to do here. I want to thank you, Mr. Westerly. Erica, dear, have you poured a glass for me? Yes, Father. Here you are. Danke. You know, Mr. Westerly... A work of art is a living thing. And my four strelitzes, never have I ever felt them to be more alive than they are at this moment. Brotherhood, charity, wisdom, love. Shall we drink to them, Mr. Westerly? Always, Mr. Muller. Always. And why not? 
From time to time, in the whirlpool of our frenetic existence, one or more of those four seem to fall out of fashion for a while. Indeed, it happens so often, and with so many people, you'd actually think that things can be replaced with something better. Don't even think about it. There is nothing better. I'll be back shortly. This is WJX AM in Jacksonville, Florida. We now conclude our broadcast day. WJX is owned and operated by the city of Jacksonville with studios and offices at 225 West Coastline Drive in downtown Jacksonville. WJX AM operates on an assigned frequency of 930 kilohertz with a power of 5,000 watts as authorized by the Federal Communications Commission in Washington, D.C. WJX is near.